Dr. Molino, Dr. Azuram, and Dario, thank you so much for joining me today. So Dr. Molino, let me get started with you. Earlier this year, the Cleveland Clinic partnered with IBM to focus on accelerating research discoveries with the help of quantum computing technologies, artificial intelligence, and very rapid cloud-based data sharing. What are the implications of that partnership for your research teams on a practical level? When you think about the excitement this type of partnership brings to research and also the advancement of healthcare innovation, uh, there is no one in the world that has this type of relationship. And I think one of the things that the pandemic has taught us is that we have an enormous opportunity, in fact, an obligation to partner with great organizations to really advance medical science, research, education, not only here in the United States, but across our enterprise, across the world. Is this use of big data useful for examining community healthcare outcomes, developing epidemiological models, finding new treatments, building new drugs, or, or effectively all of the above? Absolutely all of the above. So science for development of population studies, epidemiology, as you point out, Epidemiology is a whole host of factors. Of course, the population exposures, the risks, the genetics that population brings to their risk. And that leads to large amounts of data, geoscale data. It's rich data, but hard to analyze and synthesize. Similarly, drug discovery. We're limited in drug discovery. In our current format, we do many things manually. Now we can start to imagine and be creative with computational biology, designing drugs through computer sciences, artificial intelligence. And the same goes for therapeutics. When you start to design new drugs or vaccines and approaches, now you can suddenly combine all three to get the best drugs, therapies, vaccines for that specific population. Dario, Turning back to you, tell us how has computing power helped with the kind of acceleration in research we've seen in the past 18 months or so, and, and just as Dr. Ezrin was explaining there, and where do you think it will lead us in the years ahead? An area that I'm very excited about, I'll give an example within the world of artificial intelligence. Um, you may have all heard about the uses of neural networks to be able to do things like speech transcription or translation between languages. I would say the category is you have data, you learn from the data, and you try to classify or sort out the data. But a new area that is emerging that is incredibly exciting is the use of neural networks not to do classification, but to do generation. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that, say for example, that we train some of these neural networks with a lot of chemical uh, data, right? Molecules in the past, you know, chemical reactions uh, that we can take from the literature, say from patents and publications. And the task we're gonna give this new kind of AI is to allow us to imagine new molecules. So it's not about just analyzing the data that exists, we want in this context, these generative models to help us humans and scientists with the role of hypothesis generation, with the role of creativity and imagining maybe new molecular spaces that man matter. Well, incredible work, Dr. Molino, Dr. Erzurum and Dario, thank you so much for joining us today and good luck with this excellent work. Thank you.